Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Kezia. I'm a second year engineer in Exeter College, Oxford. And I am from Indonesia. I'm Indonesian. I took A-levels coming here. Hi, I'm Emily and I'm doing English as well. I'm a second year at Exeter too. And I'm from Denmark. I was born and raised there and I did IB. Hi, um, I'm Coral. I'm from Korea. Um, again, studying English at Exeter and I applied with APs and SATs. Is it expensive to live in the UK compared to your hometown? Way more expensive to live in the UK than in my hometown. So without the scholarship, I don't think I'll be able to actually live here. Um, especially like the food, Indonesian food is way, way cheaper. It's like three times cheaper there than here. And then um, not to mention the accommodation, just living here in general. Is it more expensive than Korea? Yeah, it's slightly more expensive, um, especially like some, like certain parts, like for example, eating out um, in Korea is like, it's much cheaper in Korea, um, whereas groceries, I think, is quite similar or Korea could be even more expensive than here actually. Oh, yeah. So in Denmark, I think it's actually more expensive, so... Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. So I think, for example, like a McFlurry, Cassie and I went to get a McFlurry today for McDonald's and it's, I think it's like one pound. But in Denmark, I think it would be around three pounds. So yeah, it's really expensive. Three pounds. But I would say, so like, yeah, I have to like also just kind of accept it when I'm here, I think just to, one thing that is different though, is that in Denmark, university is free. And I would actually get, like I get, I would get money from the state every month to go to uni. And then, so most people, like most Danish people don't go to uni outside of Denmark because then you would have to pay. So in that sense, I pay a lot more than I would in Denmark. True. Which SAT subject test do you need to take for your course? And maybe we can also talk about what subjects we each took for our course. Maybe you can start because you also did SAT. Yeah, so basically um, for a lot of the course requirements in Oxford, um, you need to get like, I think three or five, like depending on the scores you get as well. Um, and it can be either SAT subject or AP or like combined, they're kind of like equivalents. Um, I did both. So for SAT subject, I did Spanish and Math Level 2. Um, for AP, specifically for English, I did English Language, English Literature, and like some related humanities ones like um, World History, European History. Um, I also did some rogue ones, so like Microeconomics, Macroeconomics, Psychology, um, calculus and comparative government but like obviously you don't need to like do all that like my interviewer actually asked me why I did those um, so I think like um, SAT subject or AP or like a mixture if that's like better for you um, I think around like yeah maybe five would be like a, a good number yeah I see you took calculus <laughs> which is very impressive to me mm. um, for A-levels I took four Subjects. We only need three subjects and um, like two sta two A stars and one A. But I took four A levels: um, maths, physics, chemistry, and biology. How about you? Yeah. So in IB, you do six subjects, and I actually swapped my subjects around, which is what I liked about IB. But in the end, for my higher levels, I did three high levels, and I know that some people do four, but I just did three, and I did English literature and history and Danish literature higher level and then for my standard levels I did physics, chemistry and maths standard level and my interview also asked me why I did so many sciences because you don't have to, especially not for English but that's because I thought I was going to do a science degree before mm -hmm. um, and yeah, then you also have TUK of course on top but that's what everyone does yeah. Anyways, Carl just left because she needs to be somewhere now and we can just go on, right? We're right <laughs> You're right. <laughs> We're English. English. Hello. Hello. Um, do we need IGCSE to apply? Um, you don't need IGCSE to apply. IGCSE is just like a proof that you finish middle school, kind of. So if you have like your school report, I think you can just use that uh, in your UCAS if they actually ask for it. But I don't think you need IGCSE. So. Next one, can you recommend some extracurriculars or steps to take that will help with application? Um, I would say that it's not as important as the written test and A-levels, but 
it is a good thing if it's like relevant to your subject and that you can put it in your personal statement. For example, like for engineering, it's really good if you have, for example, done a physics club or like an Olympiad yeah. and get a bronze medal, gold medal somewhere or like math Olympiad, I don't know. I, I mentioned it a little bit too, but I think in general, Oxford doesn't really care about it as much as American unis will. Yeah. So I would say only like go into detail with something if it is relevant to your course. So if you, for example, did the physical Olympiad or maybe you did some writing in your spare time for English or something like that, that's like really relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very more academic here. So than, much more academic. Than the US. And also in an interview, they will also see how you are as a person. So you don't need to show too much that you are like all around good person because yeah. they will interact with you in the interview. Um, I have never done any Olympiad before in my country, so do I still have a chance to go to Oxford? Yes, <laughs> you still have a chance. Like, don't worry about it. I don't have any like gold medal, silver medal, whatever from an Olympiad. I didn't go to Olympiad at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so many in Asian countries, yeah. they are like the top students kind of. Yeah. So another thing that people might be wondering is a strategy to build a good personal statement. And I think maybe the importance of a personal statement depends on the subject because I would argue, I don't know for sure, but I think that it's more important in a humanities subject because they want to see that you're good at writing and like your, your grammar should be perfect, like there should be no mistakes in there at mm. all. Whereas we just read Kezia's and she had <laughs> a mistake in there and that's okay, she still got in. Um, so like obviously, you know, there are other factors in your application too, but I think it's good to have a good personal statement because that's like something you can actually work on in advance. So I would say for English, and maybe you can apply it to other subjects as well, um, you should focus on talking about specifics in terms of why you're passionate about the subject or what you've learned that's specific to you instead of talking too broad about something like, I love like I love language, I love blah, blah, blah. I think it would be better to, like for example, in my case, I talked about two or three books and I made specific points about what I learned from them or how I interacted with the books more specifically. Um, and I think that's better because then it shows why, like it shows how you think and how you analyze. Um, and then I think for all personal statements, there should be an introduction and then like some paragraphs that are like in logical and then a conclusion. Um, and yeah, I think that would be my main points to show how you're passionate outside of school as well. So if there's anything you do like for me, for example, I said that one of the books I was really interested in, I went to a museum to learn more about the author's life and then I was talking a bit more about that just to show that you love your subject so much that you will go out of your own way to learn more about it. Um, and yeah, that would be my tips. My tips maybe to just avoid overused phrases? Yeah, that one's a really big one. Yeah, and don't try to like explain or define, for example, like, oh, the definition of maths, definition of mm. physics, whatever. No, because you like just imagine like the tutor that will be reading your personal statement might have read like thousands of amazing essays mm -hmm. from people all over the world that are like super smart as well. So just think about it and ask people around you to read it and proofread it for you. Yeah. And, yeah. And don't be afraid to edit it as well because mm -hmm. mine started out completely differently to how it ended. I think I had to write about like six or seven drafts, maybe even ten. Which certification should I take if I want to apply for humanities subjects? Oh, so I personally did IB, but most of the English people, I, most of the people I know who do English here probably did A-level. Also because English is like, obviously most people who do it are actually English and like from England. So they, most people would have done A-levels. Um, but I also know people who haven't done any international. So for example, people from Denmark who have done their own national like certificate have still gotten in and they just need to do the IELTS. IELTS. IELTS, sorry. <laughs> um, they, they still need to do the IELTS. Um, so for humanity subjects, I think just like make sure that it, the certificate is like approved by Oxford, but I don't think it makes a difference if you do IB or A-level or whatever it is. So yeah, I think that actually concludes the last question of this video and I want to thank Emily and also Coral, who's not here, <laughs> <Imagine but Asna>. <laughs> <laughs> for being here with me and answering these questions with me because 
just so much more interesting, right? And we have different perspectives and like mm. about point of view as well. And I hope you guys enjoy this video and also find this video useful. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, share it to your friends, to your family, to the people you know that is going to apply to Oxford as an international student or anyone really. And you can put down your comments or like suggestions for the next video and also a thumbs up. Yay! Thank you so much and see you guys in the next one. Bye! Bye. Thank, Thank you, you. best old friend though! <laughs>